Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Review. Today we're going to be going through a review of the Gensler Magellan preamp. It's an analog base preamp that sounds amazing. Um, it's actually earned a spot on my pedal board. As <laughs> I, I'm not understanding why more people aren't talking about it, but before we get to bragging on it and all that good stuff and how amazing it sounds and all the features, let's just hear my bass without it. <laughs> Even though we already start. Let's go. So that's my bass without it, and here it is with everything just flat, um, and just the preamp. This is just turning it on. So, as you can see, just kicking it on, it, it just sounds amazing. So, I'm going to go, you know, I'm, I don't do the internal individual knob stuff um, type stuff. But um, one thing, I, I, you know, just right off the break, you know, you got a couple filters that, you know, you need to be aware of how they work, you know, to, to, to get the best out of it. So, you got this high pass filter here in the middle, you know, um, and, and what this does is it cuts out some of those um, frequencies that aren't really, that are kind of just making the speakers, um, your bass amp um, speakers work a little harder, you know, and not really as audible as things above a certain frequency. Um, typically, for bass, um, I, I do a high pass of everything, um above 30 so you know i let all the frequencies above 30 hertz go through even when i'm mixing and stuff like that so that helps keep my mix a little cleaner and you know lets me have some sub frequency stuff unless i'm using some sub stuff you know like you know i'm playing i'm talking about just bass guitar um so i, I usually set my knob like that something like that you know it's it's when it's all the way down it's set to 25 or is that 20 yeah, set to 25 hertz, so 
I, I usually set it somewhere like that. You know, you ain't got to be too surgical with it because it's just cutting a little. It's not cutting really any booty. Watch this. Watch this. But what you can't see, if you were looking at an EQ and it is running like, um, say you have Logic or something, um, you can see the EQ as you're playing each note. And if you turn that knob, you'll see that the frequencies below that, um, whatever point you're setting it to, are greatly decreased. But they're not like, it's not a complete high pass filter. So it's only giving you, a, it's only cutting out a little bit of it. Like it's only cutting it down a few dB. So just so the speakers don't have to work as hard. Um, but they still, you know, and that actually, and what that does is it actually allows your speakers to work more efficiently, and allows them to push out more sound, you know, and it actually makes the preamp sound so much bigger because the speakers aren't trying to fiddle with as much low end as they usually are dealing with, you know, um, not even low end. I say sub frequencies that aren't really, um, that really a lot of the bass amps aren't even pushing through it like that it's just making the speakers move more and work harder without getting an actual result from it so um yeah turn that like that i usually turn my my bass somewhere like that what's that about one about 1 30 2 o'clock you know what i'm saying um because this it's this thing adds some ton of weight watch this Just add the, just add the bass, bass knob and the high pass filter, and you got a crazy, crazy nice sound right there. Say you wanted to scoop it out a little bit, um, you know your mid frequency knob there. You got that. You can choose anywhere between a hundred, a hundred fifty um hertz, um killer with a hundred fifty hertz and um, mm, excuse me, two point eight kilohertz, which is you know. Um, 2800, 2800 hertz, whatever. Um, so I like to do mine, you know, if you're watching in my video, I like to do mine around 250. And I usually cut around that area around 250, um, 220, uh, sometimes 300, you know, any, you know, anywhere up from, two, from 220 to 500, I might cut. A lot of times using different, depending on the type of head it is or the preamp, just because that that gets me to my sound a lot closer. And then the rest of it, I usually do with my bass. Um, but, yeah, because, I mean, even still, if I was going to do finger style, you know, let me see, let me turn this back flat, the mids back flat real quick. But, you know, I would just pull my mids knobs out, and that, my mid knob, my mid knob out and... You know, change the mid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
as you can see, you know, it, it's it just adds so much character. Without adding, it's so transparent, but it adds so much character. It's, it's weird. It's a weird type of thing. It's not the same as, like, you know, I have an SUT, and I also have an AG, an Aguilar AG preamp, and, I also, and you know, WTDI, I got Harky, um, TC Electronic, um, a BA-210 over there. Um, I got plenty of preamps, plus the digital ones I have in my B6 or, or MS-60B, things like that, as well as Amplitude 5 and, and, you know, things like that. So I got a ton of different you know, digital and analog preamps. But this one in particular, it, it, it got it adds something sparkle special to your sound. It just adds a little bit of, it's hard to explain. I, I'm not sure why why it doesn't color it, but it adds so much to it. I, I'm They did some magic with it, so I, I, I love it. Here we go. So yeah, it just oof, that this ain't so much fire, dog. You can add add you some highs in there, some trouble. brings out that like piano texture in in with like this these stainless steel strings like i use um diadario um pro steels those are those are great strings by the way um but so they have like a very piano type sound like especially when you slap but, but these this 
this preamp really allows it to the strings and and the bass to really shine like the tone of it. it I, I, <laughs> it's just crazy. I can't wait to take it on some some different stuff. I'm definitely going on some records for sure. Um, so now the last little feature of this amp, <clears throat> not little feature, but another you know amazing feature of this amp that I uh, is these filters here. So, you've been listening to it without the filter so far. So, the one on the left is a scoop, and the other one on the on the right is a frowny face, basically, EQ. So, if you don't know what those are, one of them scoops out the mids, and one of them pretty much accentuates the, the mids. So, um, you know, of course, the more you turn it, the more, the, the you know, the more dramatic the effect is. And... You can't turn them off. I wish they just let it go be a three click. That would have that if they had made that switch a three click, it would have been perfect. Just like they could have made this a three click, um, and allowed you to bypass it. So, you know, and another light, another light here, and making this three clicks, three clicks would have been way better. I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, you know, sound-wise, it's amazing. And it's built like a tank, too. It's nice, solid metal. Feels really, you know, it is a bigger preamp. It's about the size, it's, it's about the same size as the SGT um, DI, you know, the Ampeg SGT DI. So they're both bigger than the than the AG preamp. The AG preamp is the smallest out of those three. The AG and the Eden WTDI, those, type, those are, like, smaller than the Magellan and the SGT. So, um, but 